Welcome to Our Town, a 30-minute podcast brought to you by Best Bark Communications, a small but fierce client-centered marketing company powered by decades of experience and well-established business networks. This is Andy Ockersell, and this is Our Town, and we have the opportunity to talk to one of my favorite people and one of the the uh, legends of our town, Susan Laz, is CEO and principal and in charge of Ridgewell Caterers, maybe to me the most familiar name of any caterer in Washington. And certainly that truck that I see is a legend in our town. And Susan, thank you for being here. Oh today. my gosh, thanks for having me, Andy. You and I go back a long way. A long way, <laughs> dear, but it's such a beginning. But tell me, about Susan Laz. Tell me about where you grew up. You were not a native Washington. No, but I've been here for almost 40 years. Well, you're a native, but... No, I still can't say that because you natives don't allow me to say it. <laughs> it's you... crazy. Uh, I came down here in 1978 for college and I never went home. Down from where? I, from Wyckoff, New Jersey. And it's uh, it's up in North Jersey, and it a was, Jersey girl, huh? I'm totally a Jersey girl. When I drink scotch, you know I'm a Jersey girl because <laughs> all those like, what are you talking about? Comes out, but now it's not coming out. It only comes out when I get all heated up or when I drink scotch. <laughs> yeah, so I came down here to go to Marymount University. At then, at that time, it was a college, all girls college in Arlington. In Arlington, I Virginia. knew it well. Marymount. I'm sure you did. It's not did. all girls anymore. No, no, no. It's a beautiful, booming <laughs> university. I'm actually on the board of trustees. And I'm honored to be school. serving the school. Yeah, I had a board meeting yesterday. It was a what, great school. It, it, most things that this is kind of stupid on my part to, to, to say the thing that impressed me the most. I'm coming up free 95, 95, and one of the exits is from Mary Mount College. I said, how in the world can somebody do that with one of the great uh, um, uh, highways in the world? Here's this. I thought a little school with their own sign. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, we have multiple campuses where we just broke ground on our b new business school in Boston, one of the last pieces of uh, real estate in Boston. And we are, we, uh, Mother Magella years ago in the 80s <laughs> convinced someone to sell her that piece of property, not knowing what the hell. Bob Peck Chevrolet was right next door to I it. I know it quite well. Yes, of course. Yeah, so, so uh, Mother Magella bought that property for no money, and now we're building our new campus campus and in housing and a residential and we're really excited about it. It's a new era for Marymount University. Well, for, well what is the percentage of, of, uh, of people who live there? They all live on campus? No, in no. I mean, when I was there, it was there was a great deal of commuter. There is still a, a, a fair amount of commuters. I don't know the exact percentage, but there is more living on campus than commuting, with the exception of the uh, the master's program. There's not any of the night schools, but we built the Malik School of Nursing, uh, opened up a couple years ago, and now our business school. So it's, it's a great university. I didn't encourage everybody to take a look at it what a what a great thing for our town yes Arlington's our town as you know yes to have this wonderful school right and, and what are the what is the order of the nuns that started uh that? religious sa sacred heart of the religious the sacred heart. There, yeah we name. just gave them a nice little uh, recognition yesterday in the board meeting yeah oh my god so, yeah it's great well, Su susan you, you serve on so many boards i want to get into that but so you came from yep. jersey jersey how how did you get in well you worked in a lot of jobs before you uh... no so uh, my my mom and dad were had a very strong work ethic and you know we came from a middle class family my mother was a school teacher and back you know when i was growing up mothers didn't really work they they no, stayed at home and so my mom would get in her car she was a school teacher a career school teacher reading specialist for 30 years and she had a great career and was uh, in charge of the um, the Teachers Association and uh, in everything Jersey. in Jersey. And my father started a business from nothing, an um, architectural and engineering firm, oh. which is now still thriving. He's since retired and sold it to his employees. So they both worked a lot. At six o'clock, we were all home for dinner. But then after that, everybody scattered. Everybody had to be there at six o'clock for dinner. Um, so I, That's a I, strong family. It is a strong family. And, and I, I have those with me now. Today, I make sure everybody's home for six o'clock for dinner, even if it's just the two of us. So <laughs> I, I worked in the deli in high school i would i would work eight to ten hours every saturday every sunday wyckoff deli it's the best and every time i go back to wyckoff for wedding or funeral i make sure i get in there <laughs> and then and then i would take a bus there after school and i'd work three hours after school so i i just worked a lot and then when i came down here to go to college i worked at a place called tino's in, in right around the corner from the pawn shop at tino's remember mama's in oh, roslyn God, yeah. and the oh, pawn yeah. shop name the too. pawn shop tommy yeah 
So I worked there uh, at, during college, not because I had to. I just wanted to. I just wanted to work, and that's where um, a lot was happening. So I, I was just that have your a strong... beginning of your connection to the food business. And no, catering? I think it's the deli. But before that, so we're Polish, and my uh, gr- my. Grandmother and grandfather, Bobshi and Jaji, emigrated in from Poland, and and they had a big piece of property in North Jersey. And so on weekends, all the Polish people would collect at my grandparents' property, and they'd all bring a dish. But my grandmother would put together a big <laughs> feast, and and everybody, family, yeah, and and dining room at, at all the holidays were at my grandparents' house. Now remember, there was no convection oven, there was no dishwasher, there was no uh, special fancy cooking things. My grandmother would would put it together, and the the dishwasher. <laughs> was my father and my uncle, which were the two son-in-laws, they start washing the dishes. But yeah, it, <laughs> it was, work. It was we, there'd be 30 of us around a dining room table. It was, it was great. So my grandmother was really my role model when it came to cooking. My mother couldn't cook for crap. And if you hear this, Mom, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. she was a school teacher, She right? was a she was school busy. teacher. She was busy. I just said it, it, it stipped, skipped a generation. Although she did do a good fried chicken. But other than that, <laughs> she couldn't really cook. But my bopshi was the, the cook who taught me. And the passion for entertaining was my bopshi. Well, so it was more than just cooking. Like You added that entertainment entertaining. as a family. Love it. Yes, absolutely. It's The family is very important. So, so again, back then, there was more people speaking Polish around the table than English. And, <laughs> and my parents, uh, both of them are Polish. We would used to go to the Polish University Club picnics on Sundays. Oh, that must have been um, Polska. I'm a, I'm a Kosciuszko Foundation debutante back in the <laughs> 80s. I mean, it was. I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Well, you proud have of my to heritage. be. And we still have Bopsis and Jajis and Chachas. There's not many people speaking Polish around the table anymore but, but but it's still very very much in me one one Sunday I was in New York for a meeting on Monday but I got up early and I went to something called the Polish parade on Fifth Avenue yeah, in New York yeah, yeah. and most of the most of the people were from New Jersey I think it's the called marches. the Pulaski Day Parade is that what it, it is probably something the like, Pulaski Day oh Parade oh my god Polska yeah. Polska. It Polska. Yeah, it was great. It Susan, was great. Oh, knowing all these things about you is important then it got you through college, through college. and then you went into the work um, yep. So I job, worked for not, your I worked for your buddy Jim Wells. Yeah, you didn't go into food right away. Not right away, but listen, behind I was behind the deli counter, so I was selling food. Then I was behind the bar. I was a bartender for four years. I was selling drinks, and I think you'll remember this. I was the ugliest bartender in Northern Virginia. Remember the ugly bartender contest the they contest, used to have? Yeah, yeah it's but you who, were never ugly. No, but you could, whoever raised the most money was the was considered the ugliest bartender, and it was a fundraiser. <laughs> and, and I think it was for juvenile diabetes. I'm not sure which which it was charity a good charity. It was. it was a good charity. In my little ten seat bar, Tino's, we raised <laughs> the most money. So I, I've got a gift of gab. I can sell anything. So if you add the food and the entertainment into it, it was a perfect fit for me at Ridgewell's. Well, being involved then, and Xerox is one of the hottest in the times you were in it one of the hot, hottest companies it was it was well it wasn't xerox i was selling wangs if you remember oh my. wang not vera wangs i was selling vera wangs father's computers Is and that that's right? what wang. jim wells and bob i Key never were knew doing. that was that was vera wang's family that was vera that was well that she's the she's the wang family vera wang right did you know that no. yeah yeah you never knew yeah, that never absolutely knew. well then they went away but i it was selling and i liked to sell and i was good at it but i wasn't as passionate about the computers as i was about the catering or the events right and you didn't grow up with it no 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 so, so uh, you had grown up with the food business but not in a well you how long you go through the training at xerox the all the things they made you and do i was to there get, probably for about two years and then I started to look and I wanted to work at Ridgewell's and that to me was was there I needed to be there but they weren't ready for me to be there yet I didn't have enough catering experience so I went and worked for a, a company you might be familiar with called Clyde's <laughs> Clyde's in Tyson's Corner know them so I was well. one of their assistant catering managers and you asked me earlier. That was their first store of the city, wasn't it? Uh, no, their one in Georgetown. Uh, they had, uh, they that, that was their first one in Georgetown. Out of the city they oh, went to. I think so. I don't really know. It's the first one. I, 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 I Yeah. I happened to be in Clyde's the night that they opened in 1963. I knew uh, several of the, there were three guys involved in that and a female Tommy when Latham? I started. Yeah, Latham. That was a long time long, ago. Long, long time ago. We are just learning so much and we're talking to my favorite caterer, Susan Laz, and this is Andy Ockersell. This is Our Town, and we'll be right back. This is-
This is Sonny Jorgensen. Got a confession to make. I let my wife drag me to one of those Mike Collins estate planning seminars. Like I don't have enough on my plate with a certain football team. Actually, it wasn't too bad. In fact, we both learned a whole lot about how to protect our kids and grandkids down the road and to take care of ourselves right now. So if you get one of Mike's invitations in the mail, go. I'm glad I did. Get all the information and register online at MikeCollins.com. That's MikeCollins.com. You're listening to Our Town with Andy Ockershausen. Brought to you by Best Bark Communications. We're talking to Susan Laz of Ridgewell's Caterer. Now, how did this ever happen? You, instead of them recruiting you, you recruited them. What, you're talking about uh, Ridgewell's? Ridgewell's. Yeah, yeah, but uh, let me finish up with Clyde's. I okay, was there sure. as a catering manager in their facility there. and um, it was Just a, for Northern Virginia? Just for Northern Virginia. They had an event space up there. It was very cool, and um, I got fired. That was the only time I ever <laughs> got fired because I didn't know enough about catering. And they discovered you, and did you they didn't know what you were I doing? I applied for a job there. I don't know. I was. I wanted to go get catering on my resume because Ridgewell's wouldn't hire me without catering. Although I could sell, although I had you grew plenty of uh, food experience and drink experience and customer experience, they said I needed the actual physical catering. So I, I was there. It was, I don't even remember how long I was at Clyde's. It wasn't long. It was under a year, and and then I kept pursuing Ridgewell's because I really wanted to work there. And um, interviewed. Wh- wh- which one of the Lathan family fired you? Did oh, I, it was someone who worked for them. Oh, I, well, I don't want to mention her name because I think she's still no. in the city. <laughs> I'll, tell, <laughs> I'll tell Lathan what a mistake he made. Yeah, you, you so. could be. He, his... he, I never met him. He never knew me. He never. Oh, knew I me. thought maybe you knew them. No, no. Well, I no, I don't. I don't. So anyway, I, fast yeah, he started forward. as a bartender for Clyde's, and yep. that goes way back to Georgetown. We and what all they did gotta start Ginger. somewhere. They're local people in our town. Yeah. And they, they made our town. I mean, they're so famous. Now you just targeted Ridgewell. Right. How did you get in the door? I, well, they tried to shut it, but I put my foot in the door, <laughs> and they couldn't shut it. And I think, quite frankly, uh, Jose Velado, my, my, my business partner, um, he, he was interviewing me, and he just said she was such a pain in the ass. I couldn't. <laughs> I just wanted to stop. I just had to hire her because I wouldn't give up. I kept coming back. back. Right. So it took them a year and a half to finally hire me, but then they finally did. Was the location the same location yes, there now? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my gosh. We've been there since the 70s, Andy. Were the, was the family alive? That yes, I worked for Jeff and Bruce for a short time. The, they I were met, twins, I knew correct? Mr. Ellis, yes. I knew Mr. Ellis Sr. I knew I, I worked for them for a very short time, and then they sold it to a group of private investors in D.C. A lot of people you know, Jim Lemon, Jim Clark. Oh, yeah. You know, um, there's a lot of... Of local uh, Barry Wright uh, people who were involved. Names in it. you're giving me names. I know. Wonderful. I know. And so these are the people that that uh, myself and my two partners ultimately bought it from, and um, just changed the business. Because well, there's a couple of names I had. I didn't know that you were a partner. Yeah. Well, did you got so you got several several other partners, correct? I have two partners right yeah. now: uh, Jose Velado and Tom Keon. Well, Tom, I know very well, but Jose, I've never heard that name. Yeah, before. no, Jose has been there almost forty. Is he the years. controller? Is he the money uh, guy? No, he was the COO, Chief Operating Officer. Right. Yeah, he started working for Mr. Ellis as a server, as a waiter, at the <laughs> embassies, and then he worked his way up. Yeah, well, you know, Ridgewell's to me, in my experience, was always a family affair. Yep. It was the Ellises. I knew the boys and. The, then the mother want the story I heard. The mother was responsible for the trucks. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Mrs. Mrs. Ellis uh, was writing uh, at the. Uh, she was. She would work there, and I think the boys came over her and said, "Hey, mom, we just bought a bunch of trucks. They wanted to ask us if we wanted it painted," and she had a purple pen in her hand, and she says. Well, I like purple, and that's how it all started. Now, I remember uh, Bruce or Jeff, one of them, told me the story, and they said, um, they said, ironically, the the car, the truck dealership at that point, we were buying all Mercedes. Said, well, if you're going to paint a purple, purple, I'm going to need a deposit. Before it was all white, it was no big deal. Like, no, no, I'm, I'm going to need a deposit if you're going to paint those purple. <laughs> so uh, we we had a wonderful 75th uh, anniversary celebration um, when we turned 75 and the Ellis's were very much involved with that celebration and we honored them oh, as great. well as honoring yeah. Jose and all of their uh, their kids. I mean, Bruce and Jeff will have kids all over the place and now they're kids' kids. And, and one of, Je- one of um, Jeff's granddaughters was one of in one of died. my sons. 
Yeah, Bruce, um, excuse me, Jeff passed away. He's the one that was down in Virginia Beach? Yes, yes, unfortunately. You know, they they were such a a big part of our town, but um, they didn't know what was going to happen when Susan Last took over because (laughs) I remember forever, but they were always there. But you have put them now in the forefront. And we're going to come back and we're going to talk to Susan Last more about her catering life because I believe Ridgewell's is such a part of our town. Mm -hmm. It's incredible what you have done and what your associates have done. And this is Andy Ocker's house and this is our town and Susan Last. Hi, Tony Sybil here to tell everybody about our newest restaurant over off New York Avenue. It's called Ivy City Smokehouse, 1356 Oakey Street Northeast, right next to the Heck Company Warehouse. It is terrific, and we have the only seafood smoker in the District of Columbia. So when you go to your grocery stores or your delis, ask for Ivy City products. 202-529-3300 202-529-3300 or ivycitysmokehouse.com Our Town with Andy Ockershausen This is Andy Ockershausen. This is Our Town. Speaking with Susan Ladd. So Susan, the, the new company's taken over. The Ellis's have stepped aside and here you are, a caterer into the nation's capital and this is a challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put them on, you had, they were on the map, but you really put them in right, the big right. time. Well, uh, you have to remember when the Ellis's started, the, well, when the Mister the Ellis's ran the company, we didn't have much competition. Now we've got some excellent competition out in Washington and, and everybody's popping up, whether they're working out of their garage or whether they're working out of someplace. So, um, you know, it keeps us on our toes and, and, and we're happy to have that competition. But at the time that we bought the company in 1997, now we're almost coming up on 20 years, we've been at the helm of the company. Um, There's been a lot of changes. We've grown the company considerably. Um, We're the largest, according to the Washington Business Journal. We've just do shy of $40 million. And that's with all of our sister companies involved. So we've grown it and we've expanded and we do some wonderful things. Well, you talk about competition, but actually the competition has made you a better caterer. Sure. Absolutely. And certainly made you uh, be on your toes and be more aggressive. I agree. And as part of that, your involvement in the community is legendary, yeah. which is what put Ridgewell's in a position to grow is because of you in contact. It's right. still context is what makes the world go round. That's right. No, I think it's important to give back to the community that's so good to you and so generous to you. And and I was brought up that way, and so I sit on several boards. Um, one of them is Marymount University, which I might have mentioned earlier, my alma mater. I'm enjoying that. Great school. Uh, very much involved with that. Uh, junior Achievement, I chaired their Hall of Fame gala uh, several years ago, and I'm on the, the committee for the Hall of Fame. And that Junior Achievement does great work. And my team, it allows my team to go back into the community and and do some volunteering in some of the classrooms. So that, that works out well. And in the Greater Washington Board of Trade, where Andy, you are as well on the board. And that, that to me, uh, is is a wonderful organization that any any business should be a member of the Greater well, Washington you know, Board of Trade. Try to explain that to people there. You know it because you live it. I live and it. live through it. They add so much opportunity for you to grow as a person and also as a business yeah. person. So when I first uh, bought the company with my partners in 97, um, I I knew it was important for me personally to get out into the community so people knew who I was. And that's one of the first organizations that I walked into. And, and uh, John Tidings, oh. uh, uh, with open arms, uh, welcomed me. And I immediately got involved with many committees and did, did a lot of work. and. And so now I'm on the executive committee, and uh, we have a really wonderful working relationship with the Board of Trade. Yeah, and I think a lot of uh, our our business development is as a result of relationships that I have grown through the Greater Washington Board of Trade. Well, what I see because of what you guys have done and what you personally have done is I see people who are now in the catering business that are getting out into the community. Yeah. I'm sure that you're a model for them. Absolutely. But that, that's what makes the world go No, wrong. you do. You never know who you sit next to in any of those lunches or events. And, <laughs> yeah, and I've right. got a handful of cards in my back pocket or <laughs> whatever. And it's like, here, let me slide that the over. Who does company. your lunches? Who does your events? But yeah, so it's important to give back to the community. And and um, I I like to get involved. Don Bosco Cristo Ray oh, is my. another um, organization that I sit on the board of directors. Uh, and that's an amazing organization. And we have two interns 
interns. It's a work study program, and it's amazing. Um, it blows it, my mind. You know, the tenth anniversary. We're, you're going to be at the. I'm going to be report. there. Yeah, yeah. That to say, I can't believe it's ten years old. I, know. I can't believe we've graduated these classes, and these kids are now out in the community. Yeah. And it started from nothing. From nothing. And the kids that started there had they came from nothing too. Yeah, yeah. So nothing and nothing adds up to a great yeah, school. It's it's a great organization. It's a great plan. The, the so. Salesian Fathers have done such a fabulous job. So uh, leading you into all of these uh, jobs and things, you've not only prospered as a business, but you personally have profited from your friendships and your relationships. Absolutely. Some of my closest friends are, are those in the community. And, you know, as a woman t 20 years ago, and I know there are other of my mentors who ha even 10 years before me, um, I mean, oftentimes when you look around the table, I was one of two, maybe three women sitting around the board table. And, and it's so nice and refreshing to see more women who are taking a seat at the board table. And I think it's important for women to take a leadership role and get out there and not be intimidated by all the suits around the table. Well, because the suits around the table kept that as a little, the old boy network. Oh, but yeah. That is blown apart now. And it's really helped our town so much and helped our lives is to get women involved in business. Women who mean business. Yeah, I was You've an honoree one the, in one of the first, the first one. one of the first classes I was an honoree. And, and Ridgewell's uh, continues to support that uh, program because I believe that uh, women should support other women. And that's absolutely that's that's one of my main things. My whole sales team are all women. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to be a mentor and a leader and, and a good role model for them. Well, the thing I love, and, and I'm, in addition to you with Ridgewell, is I see the same people when I go to affairs that we become friends now that yeah. work for Our you. Our servers, yeah, right, right. Your servers yeah. are now a part of my life. Right. And, and one and of them is my neighbor, and <laughs> we see each other all the time. Yeah, yeah. But that has made it to sort of like a... It's an old girl network. You got an old employee network, but we know most of them. And the continuity, I think, is so so important to your business. Yeah, no, I think it's important to have you know the service and the quality and the product to be nothing but top shelf, and and it's important for the consistency. So we're always trying to improve ourselves, and we do have a lot of people that have been there a long time. I just celebrated. 30 years at Ridgewell's you can. last week. Yes. You're too young for that. I know. Well, I started very <laughs> young there, but 30 years, it's, it's a the long 80s, time. That, oh, yeah. yeah. I think about 86. the 80s with Barry Wright and that oh, group yeah, Barry on Wright. your board. Yeah. It's, and, it was, it's um, been a long haul. It's been exciting. We've got exciting and times. And then you follow that up with some of the unique advertising to me because I read the magazines that, that, that have Ridgewell's ad. The advertising is so compelling, I believe. Right. I, I, without a doubt, Andy, we went through a rebranding process about two years ago. And one thing, when, when I first bought the company, we, we kind of took a look at, you know, when you think of Ridgewell's, what do you think of? And they always say the purple trucks, the purple trucks. So that will always remain our purple trucks. Um, but we just refreshed our brand because, you know, it's important for us to always be making sure you that our image is the, out there. There's market changes too that yeah. we're living with. Yeah. Websites, social media, there's more, oh. there's so much more that you have to be on top of these days. And you, and you got to remember all of them. We were referring to that last night when we, when we launched this effort that we're doing with our town is the young people who are now running everything, mm -hmm. running the world, thank God. And they're and, running it on their smartphone. <laughs> is that incredible? Yeah, as soon as it happens, everybody in the world knows about right. it. Right. But the, the thing that, that impressed me is they are really, the ones we talked to are really interested in the past because we used to go by that saying, what's past is prologue. But these young people now want to know what was, they asked me, what was WMAL like? What was the market like? We were talking about um, Mad Men, the, the TV series, mm -hmm. where, the, where the people that work with me at uh, NBC, that was one of my former lives. We're asking about did people really smoke in the office? Oh, yeah. They were absolutely oh, yeah. unbelievable. Oh, there was a lot of smoking in my office. <laughs> oh boy, it was crazy. And, and did then, they drink? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They used to have happy hours at four o'clock on on any given day. It wasn't even have to be a Friday. We'd have the leftover vodka from a drink, and there'd be a Bloody Mary bar out there. I'm like, holy smokes, you could never get away with that today. Not anymore. Never. So you're so right. Yeah, I know. It's it's crazy. Remember you Jim know. Caulfield too? Jim Caulfield was <laughs> came in after the Ellises, and he was a smoker, and uh, <laughs> uh, it was. Crazy. And, and they said they wouldn't believe me. I, they asked me, why are you wearing those white shoes? And I said, there's like Pat Boone. And they said to me, 
Louis Pat Boone. <laughs> well, this is what I've lived through to see these heroes right. go by. Yeah. No. And Susan, you're so full of information. Now I want to find out about how did Ridgewell become a national firm? It is to me because I see you and what you've done. Yeah. You, he's led you into another level. Right. So Ridgewell's is a hometown brand. Absolutely. However, uh, I'm gonna you're gonna know these names too. Ben Brundren who was the general chairman of the Kemper Open uh, out at Avenel, which we catered for many, many, many years. Uh, he was the general chairman. Started in 1983. Yep. He started catering. Yep. And so he um, catered. He was the general chairman of the Kemper Open, the PGA Championship up in Kemper Lakes. And at that time, he said he couldn't New find. New Jersey. No, Kemper Lakes, Chicago. Oh, is it? And oh. he oh, couldn't. Oh, that's a Kemper insurance. Yeah. He couldn't find a caterer to cater the PGA Championship more we're like here, pick me. So he ended from up, Washington D.C. Wa that was the first time we ever went outside. Actually, the second time, but the first big time we went out outside of out of Washington, and we drove our fleet of trucks up there. We flew everybody up there. We took. Uh, all the food and everything up there. It's amazing we made a single penny from this. I was going to say, how could you make money? Well, we had no idea. But did you know what, Andy? You can buy chicken in Chicago. <laughs> we didn't need to bring that from Washington. And you can hire people in Chicago. Yeah. They got people up there to work. Sure, they get you can hire well, servers. We didn't know. And everything. So now we've got it down to a science. So that science, that right. that was springboarded us to our relationship with the United States Golf Association. So that was an account that I worked hard on to sell in 1991. Um, they came to Crooked Stick, the PGA Championship, which we were also catering, and and we were selling them on on the U.S. Open. So they wanted to bring all that U.S. US Open vendors into one house. So we started our first U.S. Open in 1993 in Baltusrol, New Jersey, and we've been going ever since. So um, we've had a wonderful partnership with the United States Golf Association. And you know what? We don't bring chicken with us anymore. <laughs> well, you have progressed to the point you know how to do it. We do. We bring a management team in, and we, we, we do everything local. So all the money goes back into the eco local economy. We hire local. We rent right. local. We buy local. We do it all local. And the tour then is also involved in the charities and giving back to the community. Yeah, So you're yeah. in with the right group. Group. Well, I, I think what we do is at the end of the U.S. Open, we align ourselves with a charity that comes and picks up all the food, all the leftover goods, the open sodas, the, you know, the loose stuff. So, I mean, I think in, in when we were in Chambers Bay, there was something like 60,000 pounds of, in Oregon? of food. Yeah, in Washington State, <laughs> uh, we donated to uh, local charities. So. Oh my god. Very impressive. God. Very impressive. And that that was one of the more impressive golf tournaments that I lived through watching it because of the venue was fabulous. At they Chambers go, Bay. I hope they go yeah. back there someday. Yeah, we're going to head out to Aaron Hills next year. It's the first time we'll be there in Wisconsin. It's a public course out there uh in near Milwaukee. I haven't been there. I'm on my way out there in 2 weeks, so we're excited to be there. Are you on site for when when uh, your company? You know what? There? The U.S. Open is my baby, Andy. I I'll sold it. it. I know. I'm, you know, Mike Davis, who's the executive director of the, uh, the of the United States Golf Association. Mike and I worked together. 20 years ago he was in charge of the grass i was in charge of the chicken <laughs> and you know he's the boss now and now look at me so, so it's, you grew it's, up together yeah they, we did grow up together it's like old home week when i see everybody because there are some people that are still there that i've worked with over the years now so your reputation as a, a worldwide world-class caterer led the most important event in television history the super bowl yeah it led you to be involved That's with the right. Super Bowl. So when the NFL was looking for a new caterer, um, they asked the American Express, the visas, the, the corporate sponsors, well, who do you recommend? Who do you recommend? And our name came up over and over and over again. So we were one of 13 caterers that were asked to bid on the Super Bowl. And, and we're just a, uh, in that arena, we're a boutique small caterer. We're, That's correct. we're competing with billion dollar food service companies, remember. So we had gotten, we were the successful um, awardees of the Super Bowl. So we've got three under our belt. Now, with these new stadiums being built, they're so big inside that they can do everything 
they can, they're self-contained. So they don't put a tent village up anymore in the parking lot. They don't need to do that. Everything is is so is so condensed. And and after nine eleven, all all everything. They changed. do their own catering. And- well, you've got Sodexo, Levy, oh, uh, got all the people, Aramark. all the people that uh, have the the food service contracts in the stadiums will do all that themselves. Well, uh, the thing that I'm wondering about is uh, how do they continue to to do this? I would say that if you check 13 caterers, you might get 13 number ones, but you get 13 number twos with Ridgewell. Your name, you didn't may not have won every competition, but they knew who you were. They knew who we were, yeah. And that's I'm very takes, proud of that. Very absolutely. Of that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of theory about that. You don't have to be number one to be the best. You could be number two if you have the reputation. Right. And Ridgewell's has certainly earned that because of the great work you've That's done. That's right. That's right. Now, and the Super Bowl, then, there's one more before I guess they'll be going to Los Angeles to the Coliseum. Yeah, yeah we haven't done super, a couple a Super Bowl in a while. The, our last one, I think, was probably San Diego. Because, you know, as you say, the facilities yeah, are so enormous. they're all doing it in-house and reevaluating everything there. You know, they're doing that. Now, well, the, the Coliseum is now going to be shut down when they move that— when they finish that new stadium, but they'll they'll build it to do their own catering. Most likely. It's a natural thing. But Susan, that was the, say- the Super Bowl was one of the hardest jobs of my life. Really? I mean, it was around the clock for a day and a half. It was. I never worked harder than a Super Bowl. Well, I think I call yeah. meeting you after one of your Super Bowl trips. <laughs> you were exhausted. Oh my god! You said, "Look, my life is just not to finally get my life back <laughs> yeah. together." Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough job. But it's not that bad on the golf. Nope. Because that's for, for, that's a week. Yeah, for to the me, Super it's. It, I mean, it's 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 a little tougher on my team, but for me, it's like old home week. So the golf. I enjoy it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah your yeah, people. Yeah. Hey, so on forth. Sunday, I walked around with the GoPro on my head. <laughs> it was a riot. We're using all that all that video. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Susan, this uh, what you have done with. I think it should be a textbook on business, how to build a business. What you've done with, with Ridgewell. Yeah, and I give you all the credit. And well, it, it's not I know me. You got a it's, team. it's a team of people. Yeah, but it's you you're the yeah. image of the team to the community because right. you made it that way. You got out right. and did things. I relate to that. We try to do that at WML. 40, 50, 40 years ago, we began to grow. Is get involved with the community because the more you give, the more you get back. That's right. And you found that out, and you're a great example of it. Thank you, Andy. We're so proud of you and proud of Ridgewells, and so delighted that you're part of our town. And we hope that you can have continued success. And we're going to be right there for you. Great. Thanks for having me. I we love it. you, Susan. All You're right. great. Thank you, honey. And this is Andy Akaza. This has been a fabulous discussion of our town with one of the leaders of our town, Susan Laz. Thank you, Andy. You've been listening to Our Town Season 1 with your host, Andy Ockershausen. New Our Town podcast episodes are released each Tuesday and Thursday. We welcome your comments and suggestions on how you like the show or who you'd like to hear from next. Catch us on Facebook at Our Town DC or visit our website at OurTownDC.com. Our special thanks to WMAL Radio in Washington, D.C. for hosting our podcasts.